Does your duck taste as good as a nice steak? You want to know how it can? If you do, smash that like button and let me know in the comment section below what type of waterfowl do you like to eat the most, whether that's mallard, wood ducks, teal, even Canada goose. For me, it's mallard duck and speckle belly goose. Today, I'm going to share with you how I make my waterfowl taste incredible. That's what we're doing this time on Surviving Duck Season. Surviving Duck Season, offering you the best waterfowl content. Subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell, and don't miss any of our great content. Presented by Mojo Outdoors at High and Dry. Many of you who have watched a lot of our videos know that I'm a duck hunting guide during duck season in Stuttgart, Arkansas. And I've had quite a few questions here recently about people saying, hey, were you guide for, you know, uh, maybe I'd like to come go duck hunting with you sometime. So let me kind of just tell you a little, little brief information. Uh, it's again, Stuttgart, Arkansas. It's Cypress Crossing Duck Club. I'm going to put a link below. If you're interested in coming uh, hunting with me, you can uh, check out our website there. Uh, we generally stay booked pretty much all the time, but it do occasionally have people that have to change their plans. They back out for, you know, some, some reason and it does open some space up so if you are interested I'd love to to take you hunting with us and show you what we do in Arkansas. Now as a part of what I do at Cypress Crossing I'm also chef and so me and my wife we prepare meals every day uh, at the lodge and duck and goose is one of the things that we really love to do and so that's what we're going to talk about today. I feel like that it's really important for us to make food make meals that taste really good or great, not just edible, you know, not just be a courtesy to the game that we shoot, but let's make things taste really, really good. And so in order for us to be able to do that, the preparation before you cook is really so important. So I'm going to start off with what I do in preparation for cooking. I love to eat duck. A lot of people don't like to eat duck, but I love it. And uh, we prepare it for most every group that comes through if they stay for you know, three days, they're probably gonna to get to eat duck. And it's a big hit with uh, most of our customers that come down and hunt with us here at Cypress Crossing. And so I'm gonna show you how I prepare duck. I'll just say this, um, most people cook duck all the way done. And in fact, they do that with a lot of their game meat. They, they're under the misconception that because it's wild and it's not been you know, a butcher hasn't done something with it or whatever that you need to cook it done because it's not healthy. And that could not be further from the truth. I prepare my ducks just like I do steak. I cook it medium rare, no more than medium. And uh, it's usually fantastic. And so uh, let's get into it. I've got um, some ducks here. Uh, they, actually, these are speckle belly geese, which are excellent. Um, they have been... Um, breasted by our local processor which is legal to do and uh, I'm just taking the breast meat here out of these baggies and putting it in a pan. Now I do not um, do not soak them in water, I do not um, brine them, I do not soak them in vinegar you know that kind of stuff. I mean there's a lot of people that say, oh, you gotta do stuff like that to wild meat because otherwise it doesn't taste good and or you gotta get the wild taste out. You know, m different types of meat is supposed to taste like whatever it is, you know. Beef tastes like beef. Chicken tastes like chicken. Pork tastes like pork. Duck tastes like duck. Goose tastes like, you know, goose. And so there's certainly some types of duck and geese that taste better than others but it's supposed to taste like what it is. And so, you know, what you do is you enhance and complement with seasonings and sauces, and that's how you make it good, and you cook it properly. And so what I always do with most wild game is you got to add some kind of fat to it. So this is olive oil, and I always do that with ducks and geese. So we're going to just, like I said, dump a little bit of olive oil in this pan, and then kind of coat these goose breasts really well with the olive oil. And then I'm gonna add some seasoning to it. I've got my goose breast laid out, I've got kosher salt, and I liberally put it all over every single duck breast. 
or in this case, goose breast. So it goes all over. And then I'm going to hit it with some cracked black pepper. A little grinder here. And then I have a, a, a seasoning blend that I've got together here. It's pretty pretty bold. It's got a little bit of cayenne. Not too. It's not real hot though. It's more. It's very similar to maybe a barbecue rub or maybe um, a steak seasoning. You could you know use anything like that, um, and it make it great. I also uh, sometimes will do a a more savory. Um, type of, of seasoning blend that's got like um, rosemary and thyme and that sort of thing in it. So that sets for just a minute. And then we'll flip it over each piece of meat. Now they've been, like I said, they've been in the olive oil. So they're coated with the olive oil very well. I'll go back and do exactly the same thing again to the other side. A lot of people don't realize how much salt, like if you, you know, restaurants, cooks, and chefs use lots of salt um, on raw meat before they cook it, um, on steaks, and everything, really. And uh, you think it might be too much, but it's not. Crack some more pepper, and then back to the seasoning blend. Get it on there real good. Now, here's what I do. I'm cooking for a lot of people, um, and so getting the, the pieces of meat cooked to perfect temperature on a charcoal grill, um, you know, when you're talking about 15 pieces of meat or whatever, uh, or more sometimes, it's, uh, it's sometimes a challenge to get every single piece exactly right. So uh, a great tool is sous vide. Uh, cooking method and uh, basically it's a, you're cooking in a water bath. You can cook to perfect temperature and so that's what I do. I'm going to get some uh, Ziploc bags, put the meat into Ziploc bags, get all the air out of the bag, put it in the sous vide um, cooker and cook it for a few hours and then tonight when it's time to eat while the salads go out I take the meat out to the grill. It takes me just a couple of minutes to get the the char on the outside of the meat, it's perfect medium rare all the way through the entire piece of meat except on the very edge where you got the char. And so it's, it's a very easy way to get it right. And uh, for a lot of people, it's, it's, a, it's what I do with most all of the meat that we cook here when we're uh, serving a lot of people. I just get these freezer bags, the heavy duty ones that have the real good um, closure on the top turn them down so that the gook doesn't get on the seal and uh, and then I just put a couple in just like that and uh, that way that they're completely separate inside the bag as you can see right here in these bags when when we get all the air out then they're not touching each other and so it allows the meat to be cooked you know properly what we do is we cook the meat to uh, about 126 degrees in the cooker, which is rare to medium rare. And, uh, and then when it goes on the grill, super hot grill, doesn't take very long at all to get it done. And it takes it up a few degrees in temperature, but still stays in the, in the sweet spot for it to be medium rare. Speckle belly, because it, it is a lot bigger than, a, than like a mallard duck, we do that. It's mainly mallards and speckle bellies is what I prepare just because they're, you know, proper portion sizes. So now we kind of unfold the bag and then I'll partially seal it and then I stick it in this container here with water in it and then submerge the bag slowly till all the air comes out the top and then zip it and then you've got a 
You don't have to use, you don't have to use a, a vacuum sealer when you do that. It's a lot quicker and uh, less expensive, I guess, to do it that way too. Just kind of work the air out all the way to the corner, and then junk, and it's sealed, as you can see. So what I've got right here is a sous vide stick in a homemade water bath cooker. I did a lot of research to find out the best way to do it. Um, a lot of people use these uh, types of, of uh, containers right here to uh, put a sous vide cooker with, and they work fine if you're just using a few pieces of meat. But when you're cooking a lot of meat, you gotta have a bigger, and I'm not gonna pay $500 for, for a container. <laughs> Uh, just a, 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 you know, 36 quart, I think this is what this is, or 38 quart. If you get any larger than that, it's hard to keep the water at the right temperature, but this is like the perfect size. And so I just got a piece of styrofoam, cut a hole in the top, and then I've got the uh, ice chest that actually holds the insulate, insulates the water so it stays warm, you know, a lot easier. And then I just drop the bag down in there and it submerges and uh, the sous vide stick heats the water up and it also has a fan that kind of turns, you know, turns the water around so that it circulates and stays the right temperature. You can see, you can see right there, it's got that little thing spinning around, little fan jets or whatever. And uh, we just put them all down in there and uh, that's all I do. I've been doing that for a few years now. It works great every time. Uh, you can see the temperature goes down a little bit when you put the meat that's not the right temperature and it comes up to temperature um, you know just in a little bit of time and 126 degrees is uh, where it goes you just need to cook it at that temperature for an hour and a half or two hours I usually let it go longer than that you can let it go you know half a day and it's no big deal and when you're ready to use it just pull it out take it out of the bag and uh, I'll show you how that happens tonight so about three or four hours later, while we serve the salads, I remove the bags from the cooker and take them out to the grill. The grill is at at least 500 degrees for a quick sear. And that's really all I'm doing since uh, the sous vide cooking has already got the meat to temperature. Um, so all I'm doing is getting the grill marks, get the char on the outside to make it look pretty, and to have that smoky flavor and that nice crisp crust. Then I let the meat rest for about five minutes or so before I slice it. And that's a pretty one right there. Man, look at that. That's spectacular. On this particular evening, I'm serving the goose over an orange walnut cranberry stuffing with a side of sweet potatoes and a peach and cranberry glaze. And it's absolutely incredible. So here's your takeaways from today's video. Don't soak or marinate your meat. Use olive oil, kosher salt, cracked black pepper, and your favorite seasoning blend, and then let it set for about a half an hour. Cook to medium rare on a grill or on a stovetop with an iron skillet. Serve with a nice complimentary sauce. Uh, berry and fruit sauces work great. Something that's kind of sweet and sour also works really, really well. Now this is the Anova sous vide stick that I was using. I think I picked it up for about a hundred bucks. Um, there's lots of different models out there. I'm going to put a link down below where you can find uh, how you can, you know, get one of those. Uh, they work really well. I've been using them for probably, I don't know, four years now. And uh, they've been used by culinary experts around the world for many years. It's a, it's a fantastic method of cooking. So if you like cooking videos, I'd love to share with you some more of my recipes and some tips about making your game meat taste awesome. So if you'd like to hear more about those, let me know in the comments section below. Now we also have lots of other types of content, including hunting videos, you can see those right there, and some tips and tactic videos below, plus lots more stuff. So check out the rest of the content on our channel. And until next week, I'm Joel Strickland. Good hunting and God bless.